Good morning. Don't let the bright summer sun confuse you. It is in fact six in the morning. We are here in Buenos Aires today. It is summer, hence the very early sunrise, but we are headed over to Montevideo, Uruguay today. I am so excited. I have never been to this country before, so there is lots of exploring to be done, but first we got to get there. We are taking a 10.30 a.m. ferry and then we are catching a bus, so it's going to be a bit of a trek, but I am super excited about the journey and we got to make sure that we get there nice and early. Check-in for the ferry is more than 90 minutes before, so we're getting there with extra time to go through customs and all, and then we're headed to Uruguay. We've just gotten to the ferry port and we've already learned from our first mistake. Uh, the ferry booking confirmation that we received said that the last check-in was 90 minutes before departure, but when we got here, we went to the check-in desk and the woman said we can't check in before 90 minutes before departure. So. A little bit of a miscommunication there, that's all right. We're gonna get some coffee. It's currently 8.40. We were told we had to wait until 9 a.m. to check in, um, but there's a huge line, so I don't know what time you're supposed to get here. So we checked in and then we actually went through customs here, which means that when we get to Uruguay on the other side of the boat, uh, we can just get off the ship. So we got our passports stamped and now we're waiting to board the boat. It feels a little bit heavy, like I'm told it should. I was a little unready, didn't know if I could. We have successfully made it over to Uruguay. However, we still have another leg of our trip. We got off the boat and now we get on the bus to Montevideo. We made it here to Montevideo. It's about four o'clock and I haven't had lunch yet. So I'm going straight to get some food and then we'll figure out a plan for the rest of the trip. With everything and nothing We made it here to my accommodation and it is quite rainy outside so I don't know what we're gonna get up to tonight but we're still doing some exploring. The first thing that I've noticed here in Uruguay is that the financial situation is quite different from in Argentina. So they don't have the inflation situation that's going on over there and also just sort of generally speaking this is a more expensive country. In fact, I think it's considered one of, if not the most expensive countries in South America. It's not that it's crazy expensive here by any means, but if you two are coming from Buenos Aires, do plan to budget a little bit differently when you come to Montevideo. As you can see, and maybe even here in the microphone, we have arrived here in Uruguay on a very, very rainy night, but that is not stopping us. We are headed to what I've heard is called one of the best steakhouses here in Montevideo. It's called La Porteria, and it's very small, so I'm hoping we get seating. Maybe the rain will have deterred other people coming out tonight. I don't know, but I'm very excited about it. some wind but it's sunny so I'm happy. Today we are headed off on a free walking tour which I am super excited about and we're starting right here in Plaza Independencia. For the first stop on this tour we are headed down below the monument in the center of the square to see the mausoleum of Jose Antigas. Antigas is a very important figure here in Uruguay. He's considered the father of the independence movement here. If this building behind me looks familiar, you may 
recognize it from my first Buenos Aires video. There is a very similar building over in Buenos Aires called Palacio Barolo. This building was also inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy. So you have three different sections. The bottom part represents hell, the middle represents purgatory, and the top represents heaven. Right over here is the current president's office. You can see it is made of glass that is meant to represent transparency in government. And then over here is actually the old president's house. It's now a museum, so you can go. It is unfortunately closed on weekends, but if you're here on weekdays, you can go there and learn about previous presidents. On this street here, there are 32 suns that are kind of reminiscent of the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Los Angeles. Our tour guide explained that almost all of the suns are dedicated to Uruguayan people. However, two of them are international and they are Nelson Mandela and the Rolling Stones. He talks a little bit to me like I wish he would. He sees a little bit through me where the walls once stood. We are now here in Plaza de la Constitución and our tour guide has explained that there are some very important dates on this fountain here in the middle of the square. This country actually has two separate independence days and that is because they have one date for when they declared independence and another date for when they actually got independence, when they started their constitution. These two independence dates are marked on the fountain but you may notice there's actually a couple spelling mistakes and the reason for those spelling mistakes is that this fountain was made in Italy so there's a bit of a Spanish-Italian blend going on here, which is something that I think is kind of representative of the mix of cultures that exist even now here in Uruguay. Our tour guide just played us a little bit of contombe, which is a local style of music that is descended from slaves here. So it's a mix of African and Uruguayan music. It's really beautiful and I really want to learn more about it. It's just, it sounds really, really cool. Behind me is the Metropolitan Cathedral and it is the main Catholic church here in Montevideo. But interestingly, this country is a secular country. There is no official religion. And actually, I believe it was the first South American country to separate church and state back in 1918. And what's even more interesting is that prior to 1918, the city of Montevideo was not called Montevideo. It had a name based on saints. So when the constitution changed and there was this separation of church and state, they had to then change the name of the city to Montevideo. The other fun fact about this that the tour guide shared with us is that there are still religious holidays here, such as Christmas and Holy Week, but they're not called Christmas and they're not called Holy Week. Christmas is called Family Day and Holy Week is called Tourism Week. So they've kept the same religious holiday calendar, but they've sort of rebranded those holidays to make them secular. We just walked past the National History Museum here in Montevideo and some of the history that is a bit more difficult about this country is that when the country gained its independence, about a year later a decree was approved to essentially wipe out the entire indigenous population. Obviously a much darker side of this country's history but very important to tell. Um, our guide also said that this is something that was really not taught in schools up until I think he said about 15 years ago. So it's great that now it is part of the curriculum in schools, but it wasn't for a really long time. Behind us is one of the most famous buildings in all of Montevideo, and it is the Port Market. The 
The walking tour just ended. Our tour guide, Jorge, was fantastic. I really feel like I learned so much about this city. And at the end, we all got to try grappa miel, which is exactly what it sounds like, grappa mixed with honey. It was very sweet, very delicious. And now there's one other thing I have to try before I leave this market. If you come to Montevideo, you have to make sure that you try medio y medio. It is a drink that was invented here at this very market. And essentially it is a dry white wine mixed with a sweet sparkling wine. It sounds delicious and I'm very excited. Excited, so we gotta go get some. This is really good. It's very sweet. I think it actually tastes more like Martinelli's sparkling cider than it does wine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first installment of my little Montevideo series. Part two is coming next week, so make sure you're subscribed. And then after that, we'll be back to the Buenos Aires videos. So there's lots on the way. The song in this video is my original song, Choosing to Stay, which you can find linked in the video description or anywhere you get music online. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you soon. I'm working on my foreign